Hey everybody, it's Dan, your friendly fishmonger from dancefish.com, and today we're going to be assembling some water valve manifolds to be installed into the new warehouse we're building. Um, these are these are the manifolds that we use currently in the annex and the basement. They're these little plastic things. And the process you go through to install these is about the same as what we're going to do for the warehouse. But for the warehouse, we need these big boys. So it's a much larger outlet, so we can put enough water into the tanks as we need to to keep the, the flow rate high enough in the aquariums that hopefully we don't have to do any filters in them. So what we're trying to do is do enough flow rate through the tanks that we don't have to filter the tanks. These little guys aren't up to the job. There's just not enough capacity in these small outlets on them. So we're using these, these bad boys right here. So at scale, we'll be doing about a million gallons of water through the warehouse a day. And uh, that's why we need kind of these heavy duty valves. First off, we have our two inch PVC pipe here and we've marked a center line mark down the middle and these little marks are where each of the valves are going to go. We need six valves on each area to service our racks. The first thing we did already was we wrapped them with Teflon tape because it's water. <laughs> you don't want any leaking. So to get a nice tight fit you wrap them with Teflon tape so they seal well. So that's been done previously. Now we need on each of these spots to drill a pilot hole with this sucker. All right, now what we have to do is thread them out. So this will cut the threads into the pipe that we then screw these into. So right now it's just a smooth bore hole. Got to make some, some threads there for those to grab onto. So the trick with these is you don't want to go all the way to the end because as you see it's tapered, it's skinnier down at the front and gets wider down here. You want to go about three quarters of the way so that there's still plenty of tightness when this screws in. Now you probably could go all the way and it probably still work, but I feel better when this is nice and tight versus if I went all the way, it'd be a little bit looser in the, in the hole there. We don't want that. This is nice and slow and straight in. And then you stop and you reverse it. And then all this gunk that is on your threader, you want nice clean threads in each hole. So after each hole, I get all that, that gunk off. Nice and straight, we're about three quarters of the way, reverse it. Don't put any pressure on those threads, it's nice and gentle. Pull it out, this is plastic, you could strip it pretty easily. And then all that stuff, you don't want that to affect how well the next threads do. So get it off. It's a bit of a pain, but that way you get a tight fit. Last thing you want to do is get the whole warehouse plumbed and everything, and then have leaks and have to replace <laughs> a whole bunch of pipe. <coughs> So right now we're using these little guys. So to show you how this system works, let's go over and let's, let's look at some aquariums here. These black valves in the PVC here run down to these aquariums. So this right here is one of those valves. And it's coming down from there, and this is how the water gets in the tank. It comes out of this little black piece on the end. So it's all controlled from here on a timer, and at night, there's a water change that automatically changes. Right now we do about a third of the, about a 33% water change in each tank every night. But just to show you what we're talking about, I've turned the system on manually. The water's now coming in. So it's dripping into the tank from 
that little black valve up there. Okay, and that's how we do our automatic water changes. New water comes in, the old water. Now I know a lot of you know what an auto water change system is, but I assume there might be some new folks. So I'm just showing what this does. The old water goes out of this. This is a bulkhead with a strainer on it. So new water comes in, old water leaves, and that's how we get the water change in the tanks automatically. So, what we're doing now is the same thing, but beefier, basically. More capacity. So when we do the warehouse, instead of just changing a little water every night, we'll change water constantly. It'll be constant flow through, and each tank will get more than, if it's a 40 gallon tank, it'll get 60, 60 gallons, 65 gallons an hour, let's say. So it's, it's changing itself out more than once an hour. And the hope is that with that kind of flow, we can keep the fish really, really healthy and not need filters or anything. It's just like they're an extension of the river that we're building the warehouse on. They're called basically water manifolds or water valve manifolds. So we can change water efficiently at the warehouse. install the valves but before we do that we're going to take our handy dandy air compressor here next thing we're going to do here is just clear up the side a little bit now um, before we install these valves we want to clean this out because all those little pieces of PVC and stuff a lot of that stuck in the pipe if you don't clean it out you put your valve in and then you turn on the water it all comes in and clogs your valves. So I'm gonna blow these out. I didn't do that the very first time I ever did an auto water change system. And I was like, why are they clogging? And I'd pull them out and there'd be little pieces of PVC pipe in there. Um, and it, it was like that for, for months. It took me months to finally clear it out. So clear out your tubing first. All right, then it's time to say goodbye to our up here, we'll start installing these. We're gonna drill them in, and you can't really get the drill in there like that, so you gotta turn all the handles down so this is nice and exposed. Now we're gonna put these valves in, and I do it just with the screw. Um, I'm gonna get some gloves though. When you do this repeatedly, it really, really gets blistery on your thumbs and stuff. I need an MRI. I need an MRI! I've got soft tissue damage! I've got to do about close to 500 of these, so it's no joke. So now, these, you want to line it up and do it at the same angle. You don't want to, you know, go in like that or whatever. And you'll find it, if you do it right, it'll, you'll feel it. It'll just grip in. If you do it wrong, it'll be hard, and you'll have to adjust your angle. But I think that's about right. We'll just go in nice and slow. And that right there is as far as I'm gonna go for now. So that is the first one down. 17 more to go in this pipe, and um, I don't know, 30 more pipes to go, something like that. You're real gentle at first, just let the threads catch and tell you where they want to go, basically. All right, so I can, I can feel the burn a little bit here, where I'm pulling on this and turning these in, so I'm gonna get some gloves. I'll be back. That's better. Now we're ready to go, I don't know, rob a mansion or something. Boy, that escalated quickly. I. I've tried all kinds of work gloves. I've tried the, the strong leather ones and things, and I keep coming back to these little leather driving gloves. Um, they don't last as long, but I can feel through them well and have the dexterity I need to do uh, kind of finer work. 
I guess. So I go through them, like I'll burn through three or four pairs of these by the time the warehouse is done, but it's more comfortable and I, I, can, I can do the little tiny delicate work better. Now if this was the only pipe I was doing today, I wouldn't need the gloves, but I'm going to be doing lots and lots and lots and lots of these. So if I don't do this now, by the end of the day, I'll have big blisters and my hands will be all sore. Before you do this, make sure you measure. I forgot to do that in the past before, not on this build, but you know, years ago. And then you don't have room to turn these, you like hit each other. So if you do it right here and you try to go, you can't because it'll go boom, right? You can't actually get the valve in. So make sure you're giving yourself enough space that when this is closed, it can still spin without hitting the other valve. It's kind of, you have to be a little careful because you're dealing with metal and plastic, right? So the metal will easily strip the plastic if you aren't gentle and careful. If you try to over torque it or something like that, you're just gonna, you're gonna have problems. All right, so that's the video. Thanks for watching. And the process is the same. If you're using these tiny little cheap plastic ones or these kind of big hunky metal ones, it doesn't matter. It's, it's the same process, just different sized instruments. Um, anyway, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. If you like this stuff, if you wouldn't mind liking, subscribing, hitting the notification bell, sharing, all that jazz us YouTubers are always begging you to do. I know it gets annoying, no pressure. But if you want to, it's just a button. How hard is it? Just click it. Click it! <laughs> anyway, um, until next time, hope you have a good one. Thanks. Bye-bye. I don't know if my chair is squeaky enough. Maybe I need to get more squeak on it.